Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our RIT webinar on studying and working in the United States, what you need to know now. We look like we have a really great group of students here joining us, and I'm really thrilled to be sharing some more information about RIT and about the different opportunities that you have to work while you're a student on campus. And uh, those opportunities come in different forms, like internships, cooperative education experiences, and um, through research. And so we're going to talk about that. Um, to get started, I want to introduce myself quickly. Uh, my name is Katie Bizak, and I'm Assistant Director of Graduate Enrollment Services at RIT. I'm also joined by Kate Khalil, who is a Senior Associate Director in the Office of Career Services. So Kate will be here to answer all of your questions about all of our career service opportunities. And we also have two current graduate students with us today as well. So I'm going to ask them to briefly introduce themselves. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Sanjay, and uh, I'm a graduate student in the uh, Department of Computer Science. And uh, I've been in uh, RIT since fall 2016. Hi, uh, I'm Mudit, and I'm from India. I'm also a graduate student here, uh, and I'm studying uh, electromagnetics, and I'm into electrical department, and it's been a year for me, and it's still going nice. <laughs> That's great. That's good to hear. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, again, we have two students with us today, so they are here to answer any questions that you have about the student experience and what it's like to actually be here on campus at RIT. So, Throughout the webinar, you have the opportunity to chat in any questions that you have, so please feel free to use the Q&A box to submit questions. Uh, I will do my best to moderate those questions throughout the webinar, so if there's a question that is pertinent to everybody who's here, I can answer to it. Uh, otherwise, I'll answer it directly to you. And then a few other housekeeping details. Uh, you'll see on your webinar at the bottom of your screen, there are a number of buttons. So if you do have any technical difficulties throughout the webinar, you can chat into us and let us know. We'll be able to respond to you on the back end. And then you'll also see a button that links to our Twitter and to our Facebook accounts. So if you want to share your takeaways today or any questions that you have about the webinar, um, definitely feel free to click on that Twitter button, and that will allow you to tweet directly to us so we can see what your feedback is and, uh, and just continue the discussion after the webinar. And you can also use the hashtag RIT experience matters. So we look forward to kind of communicating with you throughout this webinar. And with that, we will go ahead and get started. So I've got a couple polls in here. I want to learn a little bit about you. I, again, we have a number of attendees logged in today, so I want to get an idea of where you're joining us from. So if you can take a couple seconds and just answer this poll, that would be greatly appreciated. And then we'll be able to see the results on the, the back end. So it looks like we have a lot of people from Asia joining us, which is great. So it's probably evening time where you're from. <laughs> um, so thanks for, for joining us after work or um, after school. Uh, one more question for you. Have you applied to RIT yet? We want to get an idea of where you are in your research process, um, if you're beginning to look at university options, or if you're currently engaged in the application process, just so we can cater some of the content today towards you. So. Uh, respond to that question and then we'll go ahead and move forward with the content of the webinar. All right, so it looks like we have a lot of applicants so far, which is wonderful. Um, this is definitely a great time to be applying to RIT. Uh, we are reviewing applications on a rolling basis for the majority of our graduate programs. And hopefully a lot of the information that you get today will confirm your interest in RIT and help you, um, help you understand how RIT can be a good fit for you now during your graduate studies and after when you're uh, striving to meet your career goals. So to get started, a little bit of information about RIT, uh, although if you've done your research you probably know some of this, so I'll go through it a little bit quickly. Uh, but we are a private university. 
We are one of the top largest private universities in the United States, and we have over 18,000 students. It's actually closer to 19,000 students now. Um, of those students, about 3,200 are graduate students, and we have over 110 countries represented on campus. Uh, we have over 115,000 alums who are all around the world. So as a student of RIT and as a future alum, you have a wide network of other professionals, of other RIT alumni who can help you and mentor you throughout your, your job search and careers. On the right-hand side of the slide, you'll see a partial list of some of our accreditation and rankings. But on our website, you actually can see a full list of all of our program, departments, and institutional rankings. RIT has over 70 graduate programs, and we also have seven PhD programs. And RIT is an incredibly diverse campus in terms of our student body. Uh, we have over 2,600 international students on campus, uh, again, from over 110 countries. But we're also very diverse in the programs that we offer. So although we're an institute of technology and we're very well known for our programs in engineering and computing, uh, we also have award-winning business programs, uh, we're very well known for the fine arts programs, which is a really nice complement to our more technical degrees. And the fine arts programs range from MFAs in, um, in painting and, and uh, metal design all the way to visual communication design and film and animation. So there are a lot of different opportunities for students to collaborate across programs and really learn from each other and engage on campus. Uh, this slide shows a breakdown of our student body, so you can see that uh, many of our students are enrolled in the Gleason College and the Golisano College. The Gleason College is a College of Engineering, and Golisano is a College of, of Computing. And then the third largest college uh, at RIT is the College of Imaging Arts and Sciences. So for our class of 2016, I wanted to share our graduate outcomes. We are extremely proud of our placement rates for graduate students. And over 97%, 97.4% in fact, of our graduate students find jobs in their field or go on to further full-time study within six months of graduation. So I'm showing this to you now because the rest of the presentation, we're going to talk about how uh, RIT helps prepare you to be successful after graduation. Um, but as you can see, across all of our programs, whether you're studying engineering or fine arts or business, um, your ability to succeed is very strong. So one of the questions that I get most frequently is about on-campus employment um, and just employment in general. What are your work options when you come to RIT and while you're studying in a graduate program? And both of the students who are with me today, Muda and Sanjay, they both have worked on campus. And uh, maybe you could quickly talk about the different positions that you've held and how you found those positions on campus, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay, so. Uh I guess there are plenty of jobs available on campus, more than 34,000, I guess. So uh, it's an assurance if, if you are willing to work, you will get to work, uh, get to work at RIT. Take my example. I have worked at the dining services, which is cafeterias. I have, I'm have i working as a teaching assistant. I worked uh, as a, a research assistant. Now I, I'm working here at the graduate admissions office. So uh, there, there are a lot of diverse jobs available on campus. If you go technical, uh, for the technical jobs, you'll, you'll find a lot of technical jobs in the engineering department or the computer science department. So it, it's totally up to you. If you are open to working and you are quite approachable, then you will land up a nice job. That will add to your resume and for your future career. And it, it, it's really a nice experience working on campus because uh, you get to see this diverse culture. You get to work with a lot of people from other countries as well. So it's it's a really nice experience, and it's it's a for sure thing. I, I don't know anyone who is not working here at RIT <laughs> <laughs> among my circle at least. So working on campus is like a complimentary thing you get with a graduate degree here. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh, uh, I think I started working on campus at least a couple of days before my classes started. That was an interesting experience. 
uh, I just landed up in RIT and I walked I walked over to the library. I, I really liked the library and I talked to the supervisor saying if uh, I, I just asked her for a job and a day later I got, I got a job at the library. I was working with them. It's, it's one of the great parts about like uh, being at the RIT library is that you know you, you get to work with some amazing people. Like I call them my uh, library family. <laughs> so that they're great. always there. And then I work at the graduate enrollment office over here for a few hours. It's always a great experience because what I feel is like it gives you a sense of responsibility. As you go by your education, you're paying for your tuition and everything. And then you know that you're taken care of by RIT too. RIT does uh, try to uh, create as many on-campus jobs as possible for students. So that it's, it's like a sense of giving. So you're paying the RIT tuition and they're like trying as much as they could to help you support the tuition. So th that's a good, good part, probably. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you both for sharing. Uh, on-campus employment is definitely one of the first opportunities that you'll have when you arrive on campus. And this webinar will cover both on-campus and off-campus job opportunities. And then we'll talk about how you can find off-campus job opportunities. But as soon as you arrive on campus as a domestic or international graduate student, you can begin applying for on-campus jobs. And RIT does have over 9,000 on-campus jobs available. So there are a lot of opportunities, just like Sanjay and Woodit said, for you to work on campus, earn a little extra income, <laughs> and, uh, and become part of the RIT community. Now, I did want to mention that I see a lot of questions coming in, which is really wonderful. Please keep them coming. And I have a question about uh, finding jobs in the U.S. after completing your master's program. I'm going to save that question for later because that is something we're definitely going to cover in this webinar. Um, but just to continue on with on-campus employment quickly, uh, again, as soon as you arrive on campus, you can begin working. Uh, all students are eligible to work up to 20 hours per week during the school year and during breaks, so winter break or summer break, you can work full-time, which is up to 35 to 40 hours during the week. And then the job positions do vary quite a bit. So as Muda said, he kind of started in dining services, Sanjay has worked in the library, uh, there are a lot of positions in labs, and even in some of the administrative offices at RIT, there are a lot of open positions. And I can say that in my office, the Office of Admissions, we, we do hire a number of, of students to help us. So there are a lot of opportunities for you. Now once you have, as an international student, completed two semesters of full-time coursework at RIT, then you are eligible to work off campus. So there's slightly just different authorization processes for J1 and F1 visas, so I'll quickly review those for you, and then we'll go a little bit more in depth into what the options for you are. So J1 students are typically sponsored students by their government, uh, so for example, a student who's sponsored by a Fulbright uh, scholarship, and J1 students are eligible for up to 18 months of employment under the academic training um, per degree level that they complete at RIT. And this authorization can occur before or after graduation. The majority of our students at RIT, however, are on F-1 visas, which is a student visa. And for F-1 students, there's two types of off-campus employment. CPT, which is curricular practical training, and OPT, which is optional practical training. So CPT, the curricular practical training, is off-campus employment that you would partake in as a as an enrolled graduate student during your, during your program. So at RIT, CPT would typically take the form of either an internship or a co-op. And uh, the co-op is something that is pretty unique to RIT. There's only a handful of other universities that offer co-op opportunities. And RIT has one of the oldest and largest programs in, in the United States. Okay, I wonder if you could describe the co-op and exactly what it is, because I, I know that it's not always a familiar term for our international students, and the co-op is similar to an internship, but it's quite different, too. That's great. Thank <laughs> you. So um, I'm glad we're starting off with the definition of co-op, and really the RIT considers co-op is full-time paid work experience that is related to your major and your career interests and your career goals. And with co-op, we coordinate your co-op experience with your academic classes. So for instance, 
as an incoming graduate student, you would take classes for two semesters before you would be eligible to go out for co-op. But during the time you're taking classes, our office will work with you to get you ready and help you provide the tools for that search. And I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. If you're ready for me now, or if there's a little bit you want to cover, and then I can go in and talk about that. That's perfect, yeah. So we'll cover the OPT first, and then we'll come back to the co-op and talk more in depth about the opportunities for you there. OPT, Optional Practical Training, is generally used after graduation, and this allows for full-time employment anywhere in the U.S. on your F-1 visa. It's typically granted for one year, and then students who are in STEM programs, so science, technology, engineering, math programs, your OPT can be extended for up to two more years. So for a total of three years, you can be working in the U.S. on optional practical training. After you complete your OPT placement, you do have the opportunity to apply for an H-1B visa. It's a temporary worker status, and it is valid for up to six years. So typically, after you've completed the OPT, so one to three years of that, a company can then sponsor you for a change of status from the F-1 student visa to an H-1B visa. This does require a bachelor's degree, but as, bach as a, I'm sorry, graduate students, you would have an advantage at the time of application having a more advanced degree. So our Office of International Student Services at RIT has many advisors who work with students, and they actually help all of our international students apply for both CPT and OPT opportunities. So you would have a lot of support uh, on campus in helping you find those positions and also in seeking the authorization that you need to complete CPT or OPT. Uh, more information can be found on their website, which is listed on this slide. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kate from Career Services, who will talk a little bit more about what they do and how they can help you throughout your student career. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm really excited to talk about um, our Career Services office. Uh, at RIT, we're very unique compared to other Career Services offices across the country. There are actually 28 of us in the office to help support RIT students in their career goals. So whether you're looking for an internship, a co-op, or their full-time job upon graduation. So for every student that is here, there is signed an advisor, a career services advisor, who is familiar with your academic program and the employers that hire your, you as that degree student. So um, we work with you individually and in groups to provide you the tools necessary for your job search. So there's really a full range of services out there. We do one-on-one -on -one meetings um, to review resumes. We do workshops to talk about what you need to do and what you need to add onto your resume, talking about projects that you've created, classes that you've taken, different work experiences, and how we can align that with the job that you're applying for. We do seminars that come in where we invite employers to come in and talk about what they like to see on the resume and interviewing and how to be successful in both a behavioral interview and technical interviews. One of the things that I really enjoy about our positions is that not only do we get to work with students, but we get to work with employers. So we travel to employers to see work environments. We talk about what their needs are and the changing of the industry. Um, and then when we're working with students, it makes it a, for a very rich conversation and allows students to be successful. We often have employers that come to campus and um, not only present, but interview on campus that will uh, post jobs within our career system called Handshake and then come to campus to interview and also work with us to help scheduling Skype interviews or on-site interviews at the employers as well. Networking is a big part of the job search, and so we like to talk with students about how you network and how to create a network, but then also to help our students network with our employers. Many times those employers are alumni, so we have, we're very thankful for the alumni that come back and talk. They're very dedicated to RIT, and they talk with our students about how to be successful as well. So our office is really um, a, a unique place that can help students to be successful. So when you come to RIT, I encourage you to um, get to know us and to utilize our services. 
Now, in career services, um, experiential education takes many forms. And one of the forms that we talked about just earlier is the cooperative education program. So at RIT, um, we are the fourth oldest cooperative education program in the world and one of the largest. Uh, Katie had mentioned there are, are a select um, handful of company or colleges that do offer the cooperative education program. And for us, I mentioned that it was full-time paid work experience related to your major. Full-time means between 35 and 40 hours a week, and I think it's important to, to identify that. Now, for our graduate students, since January of 2015, we've had over 1,000 students, actually 1,078 students, um, who have co-ops. And that equals about 1,900 um, co-op placements. Um, and those placements, what do I mean by that? So a student can go out for one semester. They could go out from January to May, and that would be called a, a, a placement or one co-op block. But many students like to go out for an extended time. So often they'll go out for two semesters, starting possibly in January and working through, the, uh, through August. We're starting at the end of May and working through December. That would give them two semesters of co-op experience. So that's why the numbers are different between the number and then the placements that we have. Of those 1,078 students, of those students, 1,062 worked in the United States. So I wanted to let you know that there are opportunities within the United States to do co-op. And if they're really across majors, they're business, computing, engineering, they're from film and imaging science. Um, but of those, 85% or 86, excuse me, were in the STEM programs, the STEM graduate programs. So there are a lot of nice opportunities out there. Um, as far as international students, um, over the past four years, we've had more than 3,700 students have paid co-op work experiences. And 92% of those were in the United States. Um, and it's really important um, that they're not just in New York. They are across the country. So um, of those cooperative education experiences for international students, they were in 44 different states. Primarily we're seeing New York, California, Massachusetts. They're the most popular states, but they really are. Um, students really will go where the experiences are offered. And I think that's what our, makes RT unique that students are willing to go and see a new state, learn about a new community, um, and are open to that. So at RIT, I talked about our employer partners. We have um, about 1,400 employer partners that hire international students just through our co-op program. And so on the next slide, you'll see just a little bit of something about um, the states that I had mentioned, New York, Massachusetts, California. But what I wanted to um, draw your attention to are some of the companies that hire our students. You know, some of the names that you may recognize are Amazon and Apple, Goldman Sachs, Intuit, Intel, Google. So um, those are a lot of the large companies. But it's really important to note that we have um, graduate students uh, working at some of our smaller companies as well, and they have fabulous experience and are able to make um, an impact for that, for that employer. So I think right, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the examples that we have of students that have been successful mm -hmm. in their co-op. Yeah, so I'm actually, we're going to switch gears a little bit, show a really quick video of one of our students talking about his experience. And when that video is complete, we'll come back and have um, Mudit and Sanjay talk about their individual experiences looking for a co-op and how that has worked out for them. So we're going to show a quick video, and then we'll continue on.
Okay, great. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more information about co-ops. And one of the key points from that video is that RIT students do not pay tuition while they're enrolled in a co-op. So you're not only earning a full-time salary and working as a full-time employee, but you don't have to pay tuition. Um, so that's a, a nice benefit of the co-op. So I'm going to ask uh, Muda and Sanjay to talk about their co-op experiences. Uh, Sanjay, again, he's a computer science student. He has finished a co-op placement. He will be graduating in May, and Muda just found a co-op. Uh, position, and we'll be starting that in the spring. So they have different perspectives to share. Um, mine is a rather interesting experience. So I landed in the RIT uh, mid-August 2016 for my classes, and the first career fair was in mid-September 2016, which was like almost a month. And uh, I was at the career fair, uh, just trying to like uh, see what companies were coming and everything. And surprisingly enough, I, I had a two or three interviews by the end of that day. Uh, it, it was just uh, an interesting experience, and by the end of September, the uh, pay, uh, Paychex, which is a payroll processing company in Rochester, offered me a uh, double block co-op and asked me to come in spring and summer. But it was just my visa status, which was stopping me from not working immediately because I had to finish at least two semesters. So the reason I bring up the point is that uh, to show you how RIT students are valued by companies as well. Like it's just not like uh, um, uh, it's not just your experience. The brand value that RIT carries to it gives you a certain edge in the industry. And after that, I uh, interviewed with a few companies. Then I went on to uh, work with a company called ADP, Automatic Data Processing, which are, uh, who are like the largest payroll processing company in the world. And that was my summer co-op. And they asked me to come back for a full time uh, coming uh, June. And uh, apart from that, uh, as we speak, uh, I'm interviewing with Apple in the next two to three hours. <laughs> and, <laughs> All right. Yeah, and uh, with Google on Friday. So it, it's, it's just interviews over interviews. So of, of probably like this list of companies that, uh, that, that you've uh, just seen, probably I've interviewed with at least four or five companies in the last one, two weeks itself. So th that's the brand value that RIT carries. Like when uh, you talk to a recruiter, when you talk to an HR a person, that they really understand what the kind of a... Uh, rigorous coursework that RIT carries, like when a computer science student comes out of RIT, uh, they actually are uh, serious coders who are respected in the industry. And fun fact, uh, the, pro, uh, the father of jQuery, or the one who uh, wrote jQuery, was an RIT alum as well. Awesome. It's, it's a programming language, and it was, it was an RIT alum, actually. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, and good luck with your interview today. <laughs> um, so I just heard from our technical chat that the video may not have played for everybody. Um, I'll make that available after the webinar so that you do have the link to watch that video if you weren't able to see it. Um, and I wanted to point out that I'll be moving through a couple slides here as well that show some of our students who have completed co-ops and have moved on. Um, the current student that we're showing is Anil. He was an industrial engineering student co-opted at Tesla, and now he's working in the U.S. in, uh, in Michigan. So with that, I'll turn it over to Muda. Muda, if you want to talk about your co-op experience. So, uh, it hasn't started yet, but... <laughs> yeah, so I just recently got this co-op position. I guess what Sanjay told that uh, the brand value that the RIT carries uh, all across the U.S. really helps. So I really work a lot in the lab because it's electrical engineering and you have to do some onboard stuff and simulations and all those stuff. So a lot of people from my lab, they have worked at the place where I, I'm going for the next spring. So uh, this makes a mindset for the employer, I guess, to uh, what extent uh, the knowledge people have from a university. And I guess this factor really helped me to get into uh, this company, which, which is again a Fortune 500 company and the industry leader in electromagnetic and fluid simulation softwares. So uh, it really give you, gives you a plus point uh, being here at RIT and doing the course. And uh, so that as we have a lot, uh, a big alumni network all over the U.S., uh, so the employers know how much the coursework is and uh, how much uh, leading to the industry the coursework is, how current the coursework is. So it really helps you get into uh, the co-op. As Kate told, uh, that we have a very distinct career services office and a job portal which which actually filters job for you which are based on your program and uh, what you have studied. 
so that really helped me a lot and i would say uh, everyone in the office was like from reviewing the uh, resume to helping out how to give the interview and the behavioral interview and the technical interview everything worked out well and i get it start from all those things that i got this job so it's really a challenging process searching for a job in us because uh, as i'm from india it's 8000 kilometers away from home and uh, it, it's a new land and uh, i'm seeking opportunities all alone so it's really nice to have people of such and ever and uh, such help behind your back so it it's really nice you learn a lot through applying and pursuing jobs and then finally when you get one it's really nice to have that experience so it's it, it it's a nice process and it's a nice experience great yeah thank you so much Ulit, for sharing uh one more profile up here from a student who graduated this past may uh he's now working for amazon uh Kate and actually he he uh, co-opted in denver and just had an amazing experience and as you can see from his quote here he really loved taking advantage of the co-op opportunity um uh, because it gave him the chance to live in another part of the united states mm -hmm. and now he's living in virginia and he is very happy and he was actually here at our fall career fair uh recruiting current RIT students oh, yeah. for positions at amazon so he was on the other end <laughs> uh at this uh career fair so we're going to move on and talk a little bit more about other experiential learning opportunities at RIT and so I'll turn it back to Kate. Great. And before I get started, I just wanted to take a minute because we um I didn't take enough time to explain what career fair really is. And I know there'll be a slide in the in a few slides from now that is going to show a picture of it. But twice a year we host the career services office host a university-wide career fair where we invite between 250 and 260 employers uh to come and recruit our students for both full-time and cooperative education experiences. And when I say 250 companies, that usually equates to about 900 recruiters that are here to talk to our students. And they are hiring from across the board from business to computing to engineering to the imaging sciences. So, it's it's a really amazing experience and it should you start in August when you arrive we have a lot of programming to get you ready to talk about what is a career fair how do you engage an employer um what tools do you need to be successful as you go forward but know that we have two we have one in the fall typically in October and one in the spring um those are our large events but in addition we also have some smaller fairs um for instance we had so many companies that were looking for engineering that we had an engineering recruitment day right over within the engineering hall where students could go and talk and interact uh with our employers in a more casual setting and um I may have some examples later to talk about we've had students find success in jobs from that as well we also have that within within accounting and our creativity so there's a lot of different opportunities to interact with employers so i just wanted to make sure that um you had a good picture of what that what a career fair was So in addition to cooperative education there's a lot of opportunities at RIT to get involved into um access experiential learning. In one is graduate research and this is really an integral part of experiences for our students and I'm sure our students with you today can probably give you more examples than I can. But one example is that in the fall we have an annual graduate research symposium where our graduate students are presenting posters and talks on the research that they're doing and it's um attended by other students and faculty and corporate partners that are here to learn about all the amazing research we're doing on campus and I I listed a few everything from black holes and relativity to mathematical modeling to renewable energy so just some really amazing things that we're doing But besides graduate research, um there's a lot of professional development opportunities as you're working with faculty. You know, you can you may be writing a paper, you may be able to give a talk at a conference, um and publish articles in peer-reviewed journals. Are are either of you um Sanjay or with it familiar with any of this? Have you done had any of these experiences? So, I personally work with uh Professor Hadi Hosini who's a postdoc at uh, CMU. uh i work in the field of game theory so essentially uh, any systems like uh 
the national resident medical exchange program where uh, the U.S. government matches uh, residents to hospitals or kidney exchange, which happens in the U.S. All these fall under uh, these algorithms fall under the umbrella of game theory. So I'm working with him currently on how to match students to schools based on like their scores and everything, which is more like socially fair and everything. So some of the research work that we're doing right now is uh, being applied for a grant and everything, and we're probably going to publish some of our results at a conference soon. So yeah, it's it's always a great experience working with uh, like some amazing professors at RIT, and they're always encouraging us to if you're willing to put in the extra effort, they're more than happy to like help you out. And also, uh, a lot of offices at RIT do pay for your travel expenses for uh, going to a conference or like uh, anything. So that's always an added advantage. Great. Great. So uh, I do electromagnetics as I told, and the astrophysics department of our college is quite prospering, and if you heard the news that uh, the collision of two neutron stars, uh, which was observed for the first time, our papers from our college and our students and professor played a key role in that. So I was working on a background project for that uh, in, the, in the course that I took last semester, and uh, I was not on paper, but uh, I learned a lot from that, and uh, so it, it helped me a lot to I do uh, know how to do simulations on these big stuff, and uh, the director who who is leading the center for computational gravity here at RIT. So I was in the talks with her, and uh, it was a really nice guidance, and it it really gives you a deep insight of how the research work is done using the modern technologies and uh, the traditional theories. Great. Thank you for sharing. I knew you'd have some more in-depth information. <laughs> it's, it's really an amazing experience to be able to interact with, with our faculty members and, and expand on your own growth. Um, there are other um, experiential learning as well, and that, that was more formalized, but there's some informal experiential learning opportunities at RIT happens as well, and these are really student-initiated. Um, for example, um, the Center for Imaging Science, they offer a program for funding and call for proposals, um, and it could be anything from, you know, cutting-edge imaging systems and technologies that aren't readily available, and so students come up with these very creative ideas and can have funding for that as well. There's also a lot of students, uh, graduate students, who are um, graduate assistantships or teaching assistantships, and many colleges offer that as well. One of the questions that had come up earlier in the webinar was about entry-level employment, so upon graduation. So uh, 475 companies hired RIT international students, graduate students, from RIT in the class of 2016. Uh, so we work with you just as we would for a co-op experience to help prep you for that entry-level experience. And most of the hires, I mean, they, they're in a variety of companies, um, but Amazon, Intuit, IBM, Microsoft, you're seeing Google, Goldman Sachs um, are working with RIT and hiring our, our students. I have a few examples of, of stories, if I may, just talk about that um, that we've heard of success stories of our international students, and there's many to tell, so I'm only going to grab a few to highlight. But uh, one of our students who was in a Master's of Science in Mechanical Engineering, um, he arrived um, in, it was the fall of 2015, and in the spring of 2016 he met with Universal Instruments and a manager who was, wasn't sure if they could hire an international student. And they were so impressed with this student that they went and advocated for the student and then hired them for that following spring to really work with them. They loved the conversation. They loved what that student had to offer. The student went, co op that following, um, we had in, that following spring, we had an Apple. Apple was on campus. They tend to not come to their, our career fair because they're so big and they're such a great draw. They have their own Apple, usually week. I'd like to say day, but they're here for a few days. And they're here to be able to talk with all our, our students. So Matt had great interviews with Apple, talked through. But then afterwards went to our engineering recruitment day, met with some employers there, and decided to then work at Alstom. Um, which is a French multinational company which focuses on railroad transportation and markets. 
active in the fields of passenger transportation, signaling, locomotive, and, and that student chose to go work for that company. So really just kind of a nice experience from a co-op to full time. Um, I have a micro, a, a micro E student, um, master's degree student, who's currently working as a semiconductor process engineer in Beverly, Massachusetts at, at IXYS, Integrated Circuits. And he found that job, it was posted on Handshake, which is our job board, applied to that. And because of applying through that position, received that, that experience led to the full-time job then at Riddle Technology. So you can see how so many go hand in hand in that. Uh, we have an MSWE student who is currently working um, at the Walt Disney Company. And he's working as a ride controls engineer in the hardware system. And yeah, really <laughs> kind of some cool experiences of thinking about where you can work. So I have a lot of great experiences, but I want to talk about one more because it's our, our own student who worked in our office. Her name is Anu, and she worked, um, she was a master's in computer science. And um, she came in and did a co-op within the Career Services Office, and she helped us build one of our databases and came back semester after semester and helped refining and tweaking. And um, it was really successful. And now she she's since graduated and is a software developer um, at Kodak Alaris here in, the Ro in Rochester. So a lot of great stories that can go on and on, but it's nice to see how one step can lead to another. So we're here to assist you in that. Okay. And then we talked a little bit about career fairs as well um, a little bit earlier. So I just want to talk to you now about really how you could be successful at RIT. And so upon arriving at RIT, uh, you're going to get a lot of information about everything that RIT can offer you. When you hear from the Office of Career Service, we encourage you to take advantage of our services. You know, come in and talk with us, meet with us, attend our, our sessions that we have, meet with your academic department, get to know the International Student Services Office. We're all here to support you. There's a lot of training and advising opportunities, so we encourage you to be part of that. And really keep an open mind. You may come in you may come in thinking you want to work at Walt Disney, right? And and you may, but then you may say, Oh, that wasn't the experience. I want to go somewhere else. Um, but so just keep an open mind on some of the career paths that you can follow because you're gonna learn a lot while you're here. Um, or you may go into that experience and that's exactly where you want to be and we can help you, you know, navigate through that path. But we, we encourage you to start early while you're here um, on your planning because the search could take time and there are a lot of steps in it and we want to make sure that you feel comfortable in that. And then when you're here, please consider the experiential learning opportunities of research and TAs in the co-op. Um, and we, we know that we can provide you the support to be successful. Kate, thank you so much. Of course. That's such good information. I love those examples. Thank you. <laughs> and Muda and Sanjay as well. Like, it's so great to hear from our students just about what's going on in, in your programs and the different opportunities you've had. Just so unique for each student. Um, while we've been, we've been chatting, I have had a couple of questions come in through the Q&A feature. And one of those questions is about student life at RIT, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> and the other question that I've received from a couple of students is what are the specific outcomes or um, what are the opportunities for your specific field? And I want you to know that that information is available. Uh, as you're doing your research across all the different universities and looking at what your opportunities are for graduate study, you should be aware of where your program can get you. And, and RIT tries to be as transparent as possible. So the slide I'm showing now has a link to our Career and Employment Trends website, where you can actually see by program some of the different job opportunities that are available by discipline, uh, what the placement rates are, what the average salaries are, so that you can make an educated decision about which program is the best fit for you. So I definitely encourage you to take a look at this as you're making final decisions and possibly maybe deciding between a couple different programs or different universities. And take a look at this information. Um, it's from RIT, but also national data that shows trends. And uh, it's a great resource for you. So 
I'm going to finish this webinar by talking a little bit about the application process, which I know many of you are currently engaged in. Um, but first, I wanted to summarize what we've talked about today and review what makes RIT really special. Um, first, we're incredibly career focused. As you've just learned through Kate's discussion about all the different career services offerings, the experiential learning opportunities at RIT, and the co-op placement. All of these resources lead to RIT having over a 94% placement rate, close to 95% placement rate across all of our graduate programs, and that's even higher in computer science and engineering fields. Uh, we have over 3,000 partnerships around the U.S. and around the world, and we provide you the network and the resources to be able to find different internship, co-op, and full-time job opportunities after graduation. RIT is also incredibly specialized. Uh, we have faculty who are leaders in their field, and there are a lot of research opportunities available to you at RIT. We actually have over 50 on-campus labs, so you always have the opportunity to do hands-on research uh, in your graduate program from your first semester in the graduate program. And those, those labs range from a uh, clean room that we have in the microelectronics engineering program uh, to a Toyota lab, a sponsored lab from Toyota that's available to students in our industrial engineering and manufacturing programs, um, fine arts studios, and kind of everything in between, but lots of opportunities for you to get that research experience. And then finally, we're technologically based. So technology is infused into every program uh, and into the core curriculum of those programs. I'm going to show a quick video that talks about some of the current projects RIT has been working on and, uh, and kind of where we're headed in the future. So when we come back from that video, I will talk a little bit more about applications, but please enjoy this video. Greatness. What exactly is it? It's expecting the unexpected. Answering questions before they've been asked and reaching conclusions that change everything. Greatness is finding new ways to design, new ways to think, and new ways to communicate. It's agile, it's driven, and most of all, it's relentless. Greatness is countless startups, 12 Pulitzer Prizes, numerous Academy Awards, one World Trade Beacon, and proving he was right all along. Greatness has disrupted technology, discovered new ways to send people to space, outfitted an MVP with his signature shoe, and built a more sustainable tomorrow today. It's also making a mark on a complex planet, from Rochester to Rome, China to California, Dubai to the Dominican Republic, and everywhere in between. Greatness is out hacking the hackers and outworking the competition. Here, 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 and here. Greatness is being first. The first to offer a degree in biotechnology and the first to offer doctorates in imaging science, sustainable production systems, and microsystems engineering. Greatness is creating difference. Today, tomorrow, forever. Some might say RIT is on the verge of greatness. We say we've already arrived. All right, so thank you for your attention to that video. Uh, I personally love that video because I think it has great energy and it shows some of the campus and our current students. So I, I hope that helps give you a little bit more of an idea of what it's like to be at RIT. And actually, during the video, uh, Sanjay mentioned that I should have discussed our new building that's currently being uh, constructed on campus. And it will be a, a lab that's open to students, I believe, next summer or next fall, so probably around September 2018. And it's called the Magic Spell Studio. Uh, Magic stands for Media Arts, Games, and Interaction, interaction and Creativity. And it will be a center for students who are in computing, uh, game design programs, fine art programs, uh, to come together and work collaboratively on different projects and showcase the work that they're doing at RIT. So we're pretty excited about that. Again, uh, that's for gaming and computing students, 
RIT does have the number two gaming design program in the country, so it'll be a, it'll be a lot of fun and a great resource too. So to quickly tie things together, I wanted to go through the application process in case you have questions about that. I did get some questions about the timeline for review and the requirements, so this should address those questions. Uh, the application requirements are listed here on this slide, and the requirements do vary by program, so I encourage you to look on our website, read the individual requirements for your specific master's or PhD program, and apply online as soon as possible. So the entire application can be submitted electronically, and we encourage you to do this because it expedites the review of your application. All students are required to submit undergraduate transcripts, a statement of purpose, the SOP is generally open-ended. It's about one to two pages discussing your career goals, experience, and fit for the program. And we also require a resume and an English language exam, which would be either the TOEFL, IELTS, or the PTE exam. And other requirements that vary uh, include letters of recommendation. Most programs require two letters of recommendation. Some might require three and uh, a portfolio, writing samples, or an interview, depending on the program you're applying to. So the majority of our programs do admit students on a rolling basis. Again, this is something you should check on our website for your individual program. Uh, we'll tell you if there's a priority deadline or if the admissions is truly rolling. Uh, what rolling means is that once your application is complete, it's immediately forwarded to the admissions committee in our departments for review. And then typically a decision will take about four to six weeks to be released. Uh, our admissions counselors will notify you through email throughout the different stages so you always know what your application status is. And uh, as soon as a decision is made, we will send you an email. Uh, we notify you simultaneously of your admissions decision and also of the scholarship decision. So all of our RIT applicants are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships as well as assistantships that are available in the department. And these scholarships are awarded based on a holistic review of your entire application. Um, so we're looking at your potential to succeed in the program. Uh, we look at your GPA, test scores, letters of recommendation, work experience, really everything to evaluate your overall profile. A little bit more about financial aid and scholarships. Um, Sanjay and Huda, did you at all work in an assistantship role or have you done research with faculty members? I know you've worked on campus, but... Yeah, uh, I, I particularly work as an RA or a TA. I have a couple of friends who are working uh, as an RA or TA, mm -hmm. but no, personally me, uh, I have a scholarship which is always very helpful in uh, <laughs> paying for the tuition part, but no, I didn't have an assistantship. So. Good, okay. You're keeping busy, busy in plenty of other ways, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I work as a teaching assistant okay. at the College of uh, Science for university physics too. Mm -hmm. oh, great. So it's a nice experience. It's a class of I guess forty students and I work with the professor. And uh, I'm I'm planning for uh, there is something called learning assistant in which mm -hmm. uh, it's like TA yeah. but you uh, teach. teach and you try to improve the ways of teaching uh, along with other LAs. Nice. So it's amazing. And it, it, it adds up to my finance also. So <laughs> Yeah, it's sure. So those positions can definitely help supplement your your tuition scholarship or income, but also give you the experience of teaching undergraduate students and uh, working alongside a faculty member too, which can be a good experience. Um, so again, RIT applicants are automatically considered, and uh, if you do receive a tuition scholarship or an assistantship, we notify you at the time of admission. And addition, in addition to scholarships and assistantships, we again have over 9,000 on-campus jobs. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to earn some extra income and uh, help offset the cost of, of tuition at RIT. Of course, we think it's a very worthy investment, and hopefully uh, this presentation that has helped you realize that and also see some potential that you would have in the programs to excel not only in your master's programs, but after, after you graduate as well with full-time job opportunities, OPT, and CPT. So, Finally, uh, I'm leaving this slide here for you so you can find some more information uh, easily. Our graduate enrollment staff is always happy to help. We're here to assist, and you can log on to our website. You can live chat with an admissions counselor anytime. 
I do recommend you also look at the Career Services website. There's a lot of information there about co-ops and career services, and then also we have the job outlook information for you. And if you're interested in learning, in learning more about the CPT and OPT opportunities, the International Student Services website is a great resource as well. So with that, I'm going to close the presentation. I will stay around and answer any, uh, any remaining questions that you have, so please feel free to chat those into the Q&A box. And I just want to thank you all for coming and sharing your morning or evening with us, depending on where you are in the world. And we look forward to working with you throughout the application process and hopefully seeing you at RIT soon. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.